And uh, maybe I'll just uh, ask, uh, actually, John and Ron, I'll introduce myself. I'm Alex Holliday. I'm an associate professor at Quinnipiac. I'm president of the Association of Internet Researchers. Uh, I have a dog. Um, I think it's that. And I do some stuff with the, the DML as well. Um, and uh, so, and I teach in a program now called Interactive Media at Quinnipiac, a master, a master of Science program called Interactive Media. Um, and maybe the two of you, John, could you do a quick intro and, and run after that? Sure, no problem. I'm John Barroloni, and I'm the community manager for the Digital Media and Learning Research Hub. And that's a nonprofit research institute that is backed by the MacArthur Foundation and is kind of a branch of the University of California Humanities Research Institute. And our biggest goal is uh, getting education up to speed for the 21st century. Cool. Oops. Cool. Thank you. Um, Ron, do you want to give us a quick uh, uh, intro? Absolutely. I'm Ronald Henry. I'm a recent graduate of the uh, Quinnipiac program uh, just about a month ago. Um, before that, I'd spent uh, the last uh, nine years working uh, on, for, on, on and around the internet. My background, my undergraduate degree was in writing and uh, English and communications. And I spent uh, several years working in advertising, marketing, and mostly uh, it's centered around the internet. So I went back to grad school after a little time off um, to pursue a degree in an area. Cool. So um, I thought maybe we could talk a little bit. I mean, I, I hate the terminology question because it always ends up in classes and stuff and I, I don't know what kind of work we do. I know uh, in another kind of sphere we've been trying to do a hire and we don't know what to call it. Um, so uh, when you tell people what kind of work you do, what kind of words do you use? I am from the internet or, or something else. I can go ahead and give it a stab and this kind of reminds me of, well, in my previous position I was working in internet marketing and my girlfriend was as well. And one Christmas her grandpa asked, so you work with computers, right? And it's always kind of that vague question and yeah, it leads into, uh, grandpa, do you know what Google is? <laughs> no. Okay, well let's back up even more. <laughs> so um, part of my specific job here as community manager is using uh, digital media tools, specifically social media, to gather and grow and dialogue and interact with our existing community, which is pretty wide-ranging. So when I tell people that I use tools like Twitter and Facebook and uh, Google+, Plus, it's usually okay because people are based on you know their knowledge of hearing it so often they they pretty much know what Twitter is what Facebook is it's just helping them to realize that you can use those platforms for something other than connecting with you know just your family or talking about what you had for breakfast so I usually have a leg up in that sense because I get to talk to people in familiar terms but show them how they can use those platforms a little differently. Cool. Uh, for me, again, my background was writing. And uh, so now I've been going on job interviews for kind of a different form of writing, which is for kind of writing uh, for the online medium. Um, it, trying to explain to people what I do is I always start off with, well, yeah, you know, I do web content for the internet. So if you go on the internet and you go to a website, uh, I'm the guy who puts that stuff uh, on the site. Um, before I think I did this major and kind of learned how to do some programming and how to actually uh, do more creative, uh, uh, I guess, programming and uh, for the internet, I had only written something in, say, Microsoft Word and then handed it off to the hotshots who could get it online. Um, so um, now I've been able to kind of learn a couple of the techniques and, you know, how to actually produce my own uh, online material. So uh, for me, it's just explaining to people that, you know, I used to just write on paper and hand it to someone, and now I'm able to uh, figure out how to write and get it on, uh, on in production on the Internet. Cool. So I guess um, just to... And this is in part to keep Phil happy. Um, so when you hear the when you hear the term interactive media, what does that make you think of? Uh, this is sort of I guess I get to be the the psychologist for the moment. Ron, do you have a does that? 
Yeah. For, for me, it's kind of like, you know, I've been explaining to people a lot when I'm just telling them now what I graduated with. And for me, it's kind of, it goes back to this idea of it's the exploration of the kind of convergence of media. Um, it involves everything from, uh, you know, television, sound design, um, uh, photoshopping, and flash design. Um, so it's all different forms of media, and it's all about producing uh, forms of, uh, I guess, tangible media, things that you can touch, move, see, hear. Um, so that's kind of what it votes for me. Cool. And, and uh, Ron's been appropriately indoctrinated. John, do you, do you, what does it trigger for you? Sure. And dovetailing off of what Ron said, uh, I kind of get this initial sense of empowerment and talking about the production aspect of things. So interactive media creates this affordance for people to actually create their own content. Uh, I know remix is a pretty big buzzword in the industry right now, but it's pretty relevant too. So people have the ability to one, create to um, kind of morph and remix content and then share it out as well. And then once this content has been created, they can use all these different tools available to actually talk about it, uh, remix it even more, share it even more. So it just kind of becomes the snowball. Um, and that's due to having these tools that make this new um, content production process available to uh, kind of normal everyday people that aren't necessarily involved in you know more traditional media industries. Cool. So, um, and this is getting away from the interactive media, the terminology question, uh, a question I asked in the group last week. I don't know if either of you saw that, but um, I talked to Lisa Potts and some other, some other folks. Um, and uh, the question was sort of, you know, you put yourself in my seat and, and if, you, if you knew that there was something out there that people should be trained to do um, uh, and they're not getting in, in a graduate program, what would it be? Sort of this ideal class that you think really should exist, but but really isn't there right now for the most part. Um, and I'll I'll give away my hand and, and turn it over to John because it's a little unfair. But what I thought was needed to be taught was community management. Um, so uh, that's kind of. But but uh, uh, aside from that, or if it is that, um, John, do you have some things you think that you know we we have to hire people with DML to do things and and, and in other environments too. What is the sort of skill that you think the university can be doing a better job of preparing people for before they go out and uh, into the profession? Great question. Real quick to talk about the community management aspect sense of things. Uh, I know in my personal line of work and from having friends in similar lines of work, the social media job space over the past even couple of years has really transformed into having people in-house who you call your social media specialists. So you just need someone who's technically savvy with the platforms. And that's evolved into more of a community manager type of role. So someone who has that technical knowledge now and you pair that with larger marketing or communications or public relations um, skill sets too. So kind of the marriage of both is you kind of get to see the evolution of that job space. So that's the community management side of things. And from what I can pick up and, you know, different pieces that I've been reading over the past couple of months, I'm fairly new to the DML industry myself. But I know that critical thinking is a really large focus of what people are saying we need more of in uh, specifically K-12 education, but that can even be translated up into higher education spaces too, allowing people to collaborate more in groups and have this dialogue, hash out different ideas, different viewpoints. And it's that critical thinking skill and developing that critical thinking skill that seems to be a bit lacking once, uh, especially college graduates, are getting out into the workplace area. Cool. Thanks. Ron, uh, same question. Yeah. For me, as a recent graduate, um, one of the things that I thought would have been nice was kind of learning sort of the business side of social media and kind of interactive production. Um, you know, I was able to learn really great productive skills and uh, learn what to do with kind of the knowledge that I had. But in terms of kind of uh, learning more about, you know, how to study the analytics of a uh, campaign, uh, kind of giving more about the numbers or kind of being able to talk about, you know, the return on investment or how um, campaigns work, stuff like that would have been 
I think a skill that I would have liked to, uh, you know, uh, learned a little more from or learned a little more about. Um, I've been going on, you know, plenty of job interviews in the last uh, five weeks since uh, finishing the uh, major, and that's a lot of the conversations I'm, I'm entering into, uh, kind of about, you know, my experience with the business side of all these applications that I know about or learned about or have worked on. Yeah, and, and some of this is my own background, but um, yeah, that that metrics question I think is really important. And I and you know I frankly think that when people ask that in an interview, and a lot of people talk about it, they're BSing their way through. Um, but uh, but I have not worked in internet marketing, which John has, so I may be wrong on that. But um, having at least a uh, both the vocabulary and an understanding of of what kind of metrics are available and 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 how those feed in, I think are really are both really important as well. Yeah. Any kind of last words? I, I appreciate both of you taking the time to do this on such short notice, but uh, any last questions or, or comments? Like how would you inspire? I'm, I'm actually teaching an undergrad course um, in social media this semester as well, and, and I'm going to, I like your responses enough that I'm going to push this on them this, uh, this Monday and, and let them know that, yes, that there, is, there is a job behind this somewhere. Um, but a, any word, inspiring words for those groups or, or any last, last uh Comments? I'll go ahead and take a stab. Okay, Ron, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I was going to say, um, just because I'm really fresh, you know, getting in my second start um, with this kind of uh, background from this world now, and there, there's, an, there's a lot of opportunity. And um, I've been everywhere from, I mean, I've interviewed at financial companies, hospitals, uh, ad agencies. Uh, there's a need for, uh, you know, digital content specialists, content managers, uh, someone to kind of, uh, you know, take over a, a large reign. There's still a lot of places I've been that don't have uh, people that can do now what I can do and kind of have an overall knowledge of kind of where everything is and where it's going. And there's a, there's a good, there's a need for it. So it's, it's pretty cool. I mean, I've almost felt like I've had the opportunity to kind of pick and choose what I want to go into uh, because I've been able to interview and, and talk with a lot of people from so many different areas that I, I have had the opportunity to kind of pick and choose where I want my, you know, where I want to go in the field. So. All right, and I'll repeat something that I shared with one of my friends. Uh, he's a teacher at Cal State Dominguez Hills, and he teaches a class on social media, and specifically how to use social media to get a job. And I'll just kind of repeat something I shared with that class. Uh, communication and English skills are, they really seem like the base of current and future social media jobs out there. Having really good written skills, really good verbal skills, and translating that into either online content production or uh, something along those lines, it seems to really go hand in hand. So brush up on the communication and English skills. And I'm a little biased because I actually am an English lit major from college and I kind of fell into this industry. Um, but definitely brush up on that. And then the second thing I would say is, you know, about five or six years ago, my current job did not even exist. And I think that trend is going to be even more exponential. Things are just going to keep shifting in terms of different platforms, different tools that are available, and different ways that businesses want to use those. So keep your finger on the pulse of the industry, do a lot of reading, um, Mashable, TechCrunch, other types of blogs like that, and just always kind of keep your eye to the future and what things could potentially look like. Thanks very much. I'm, I'm shocked that you didn't get a career in English Lit. Um, <laughs> um, thanks both of you for, again, for, for making the time, I'll, um, uh, and I appreciate you uh, stopping by. Thank you. John, it's great to hear that you're another English major who kind of fell into this. <laughs> <laughs> More power to the lit majors, right? Seriously. Yeah. <laughs> right, I'll probably will wait for it today. <laughs> I'll catch you guys later. Thanks very much. Bye. Thank you. Bye.